Welcome to Pod Nuts episode 28. This episode is about data recovery, how to start a data recovery center, and what data recovery entails. We're talking about hard drives, flash media, any type of physical media, how to get data off of that once it's corrupted or destroyed or formatted or what have you. And joining us today to talk about that is Thor Schrock from Schrock Innovations. Uh, Schrock Innovations is a computer repair company in Lincoln, Nebraska. Thor's company is growing in leaps and bounds. He's constantly ex- expanding, it seems. And his latest endeavor is a data recovery center. And I wanted to ask him about what it takes to start up a service like that as far as equipment, resources, marketing, know-how, software, hardware, pretty much all aspects of it. So I'm really happy he's here with us today, and here's the interview. Okay, I'm here with Thor Schrock from Schrock Innovations. You guys re- may remember Thor from an earlier Pod Nuts episode, which I cannot remember the exact number, but um, Thor, how, you, how have you been? I've heard you've been into some pretty exciting things lately. Well, pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, I try to keep busy. You know, life gets boring if you don't, but... Uh... Things in in my industry are always changing and always evolving. So if you don't change and evolve with them, you'll fall behind. So what's what's changing at Schrock Innovations? Well, you know, a lot of people right now are doing the the year in review kind of shows. You know, like what happened over the last you know 2008 that really changed the the industry or changed the world that kind of stuff. In our industry, one of the biggest things that uh, that I think completed it's been happening for a while is is the commoditization of hardware. Um, you know, right now, if you uh, go to try to buy memory or hard drives or anything like that, it doesn't really matter what brand. To some extent, even specification, you know, hard drive speed, rotation speed, or cache. I mean, uh, there might be a 25 or 30 cent difference between a hard drive uh, that spins at 5,400 RPM with a with a 4 meg cache than one that spins at 7,200 with a 32 meg cache. Right. Um, but what all, all this stuff hasn't really filtered down to the consumer yet. Uh, it's all on the cost side, and with the uh, all the major manufacturers, you know, are, are cutting back production for 2009 on their systems. And you know, Best Buy is telling Hewlett Packard, yeah, not only are we going to order half as many computers from you, but uh, you're going to give us twice as long to pay for them as well. You know, with that, with those kind of pressures going on, I think that uh, we're actually going to see more drops in hardware prices for consumers in 2009. So. Just one example, I mean, when you think about that, you know, you have a business model based on your ability to sell certain items at a certain profit point um, at a certain quantity, and then all of a sudden the whole supply and demand curve gets tweaked with uh, with an economic slowdown and price shift, uh, shifting at the same time. So it can be a little bit of a challenge to uh, to restructure and keep up, but I think we got the right formula. Really? You know, if you don't mind, I don't want to give away any secrets or anything, but what have you done? Well, I mean, Oh, no, it's no secret. I mean, Schrock Innovations has always been a high-service provider. Uh, we are not a low-cost leader. In fact, I had a customer last week who got a little upset with us because the price that she paid for a memory upgrade at our shop was twice the cost of the hardware that she would have paid at another shop in town. Right. And, uh, and this is a long-time customer, which just illustrates the changing marketplace. Um, now, to give you an idea, the last show that we talked about, we talked uh, pretty much a lot in depth about the uh, – uh, the need to, to charge adequate prices for the work and that customers actually, you know, by paying higher prices are getting a better product and better service than they would be paying a lower price. Right. Uh, for some customers, they like that, and some customers don't. Well, uh, this particular customer that I'm talking about has been a customer of ours for four years. They, uh, she had uh, been purchasing things from us for quite a while, quite a while. So to have her all of a sudden... Uh, turn around and say, well, gee, you know, I don't appreciate that anymore. It, it just illustrates the changing marketplace. <laughs> and so uh, in 2008, you know, Schrock Innovations, we reduced, we actually reduced the prices that we charged our customers for just about all hardware across the board by almost 30%. Wow. Um, so that was a substantial drop in what we were charging, but that was offset by the substantial price and the components themselves. I mean, the prices went down 30%, so we were able to reduce what we charged 30%, so we're making a little bit less on the components, but uh, but we're still not the, the low-cost leader in town. But uh, yeah. there's a huge temptation among service providers and uh, you know people who do what we do to say, okay, the economy is tough. The economy is rough now. Everyone's looking for a deal, so I'm going to be the one that gives them that deal. I'm going to be the person who gives away my work for little or nothing. Um, and we're facing that same challenge now with our new data recovery center. Uh, you know, how much do you charge somebody from a service that, you know, DriveSavers, uh, a professional data recovery firm has been around for years and would charge 
$2,400 to recover one Outlook PST file, whereas we have customers that we try to charge 400 and they're walking away. Right. So yeah. what, you know, where is that sweet spot? So that's the big challenge in 2009. And I honestly think that, yes, you're, we're going to have to reduce the cost of the hardware. Uh, we're going to probably maintain our labor costs. We're not going to increase them, which I think we're going to see some inflation next year. So that's going to, uh, you know, basically we'll be making less money for our hours of labor. Uh, because the cost of our employees and whatnot are going up to make sure that that's stable and everything. But uh, with the new service center we're building and everything, I think we're going to make up for it on volume. So the key for 2009 for us anyway is uh, increase the volume everywhere and every way we can, reduce the prices for making a little bit less for sale, but uh, we're going to make up for it in volume. Hmm. That sounds like a good plan. Let me know how it goes. Uh, but that's one of the main reasons I wanted to talk to you is I heard through one of my listeners um, – about about the new uh, hard drive recovery data recovery service that you were starting, and I really wanted to uh, ask you some stuff about that, like how it's going. What does it take to actually start us up a service like that? Well, sure. First off, I think it's important that that we categorize and define data recovery because um, there's a lot of different types of data recovery, things that can go wrong. There's a lot of different devices that we rely on. Everyone thinks you know hard drives. In fact, you'll even catch me once in a while saying it's our hard drive recovery center. When, uh, and it's uh, the marketing forces have nicknamed it the data recovery center because uh, the other day we recovered a, uh, a, a compact flash card for a photographer. Huh. I mean, imagine if you're a, f- a professional photographer shooting a, we- a wedding and your CF card dies in the camera. Wow. And it happens. My wife's a, a professional wedding photographer. It's happened to her. How do you, wh- what do you do? Do you just tell that couple that, you know, their wedding's gone? Right. Or do you take that card somewhere and get those images back? Okay. And so with, uh, with, the, with the data recovery center that we have right now, when there's a hard drive failure from, let's just look at a hard drive here. There's three different categories of hard drive failure. We've got a data loss, which is the easiest to fix. This is, everybody's got these software tools like the hard drive regenerator and all this other stuff that's on the marketplace right now that you can use to, to deal with a hard drive that has a failure of its magnetic media. So in other words, it, it's not reliably reading the disk anymore, right. but it works sometimes. So you can stabilize those drives usually with software. They just, it beats the heck out of the drive, but it stabilizes it, and you can clone it or copy it or you just get the data off the drive and put it on a stable source. Everybody's been able to do that for a very long time. Uh, that's nothing special. We've been able to do it too. So obviously we're going to have that service. Then you can get into more of the virtual labs, uh, the undelete kind of stuff where you can actually go back on a hard drive, and it amazes our customers. So we're producing some YouTube videos right now where we're going to, we're going to do some unimaginable things to a hard drive. We're going to, you know, put a text file on the on the desktop of a of a computer that has a, so, a fake social security number in it and just save the text file. And then we'll format it. We'll run a recovery disk on it. We'll leave it out in the cold for a few.